Hello and welcome to the round 12 of my 2024 F1 season simulation. If you missed the last part, part 11, the Austrian sprint, make sure to see that one. If you're watching this video, that was a hell of a race. We had a brand new winner as well. Uh, spoiler, spoiler a bit, but yeah. Make sure to check that one out if you missed that already. Um, yeah, here we are for the round 12 of the 2024 British Grand Prix. Uh, for this weekend, it seems like it's been completely dry. Uh, just, uh, I guess, not very typical of the British Grand Prix, but I mean, recent years we haven't seen too much uh, rain, anyways, there. Uh, probably, um, I don't know, never mind. Uh, let's just go into the upgrades. Uh, we have four teams with bigger upgraded packages, uh, including Ferrari, Aston Martin, Williams, and McLaren. Uh, a lot of other teams bring some smaller updates to their car as well. The only teams to not change their car whatsoever are Red Bull and Mercedes, apart from always the setup changes, but those don't really count here. Uh, yeah, let's see uh, if these upgrades change anything in terms of picking order. So we have a very a different track compared to the uh, last few ones we saw, obviously. This is a very high-speed track that may suit some cars and may not suit others. So let's see Q1. Provisionally, it's Max Verstappen on P in P1, the provisional Q1. We have Carlos Sainz in P2 and Charles Leclerc in P3. There's Russell, Alonso, Hamilton, Norris, Stroll, Perez and Oscar Piastri rounding out the top 10. We have Hulkenberg, Sonoda, Albon, Ricardo, Sargent, and the provisionally uh, drivers out in Q1 are Magnussen, Gasly, Ocon, Bottas, and Guan Zhou. So Alpine seems like they're struggling quite a lot on this track compared to the last few Grand Prix where the Alpine seemed very quick, uh, especially in qualifying. Uh, Sauber, yeah, you would expect Sauber to struggle because. Yeah, pretty much, they're pretty much the slowest car now, thanks to uh, Haas making some upgrades to their car, uh, which meant that Haas is now the second slowest car. Woohoo! Uh, yeah. Uh, up on the top, it looks very close between the rest. Obviously, Max 7 a bit far ahead, ahead of everyone, but the rest of the field seems very close together, as we're used to see in the past few years. Um, yeah. Signs ahead of the plug, Russell and Hamilton, and come on, the rest is pretty much uh, what you would expect. Let's see if there are any changes uh, to this session. And there are. There are two deleted, deleted lap lines for Max Verstappen and Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, Max Verstappen drops from P1 to P4. No, nothing too crazy there, but Daniel Ricciardo drops from P14 to P16, meaning he is out in Q1 alongside the two Alpines and the two Sauber drivers. Yeah, that's it for Q1. Uh, we have Ferrari 1 2 in Q1 thanks to Max's lead lap time. But yeah, uh, since Max can set one lap time and still finish before, uh, we probably should fear his speed in this particular circuit. Um, yeah, let's see uh, how Q2 pans out. So we see Fernando Alonso topping Q2, uh, it's very strange, uh, ahead of Carl Sainz, so Sainz seems like faster for our driver so far. Lionel Norris in P3, Max Verstappen only P4, he's like the Red Bulls, where not really trying in Q2. Charles Leclerc in P5, Lance Stroll P6, Piastri P7, Perez P8, Russell P9, and Yuki Tsunoda in P10. Uh, provisionally knocked out in the Q2 are the Williamses of Sargent and Albon, who set the exact same la lap time, but Sargent set the lap time first, so technically he's ahead. Uh, which would also mean, unless there are any changes, this would be the first time Logan Sargent out qualifies Alex Albon in a regular qualifying in the simulation uh, overall uh, by 0, 0.000 seconds. So, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's 4 about 1 for you. Uh, Lewis Hamilton only P13, uh, but the gap to his team, Mercedes teammate isn't too big, suggesting that Mercedes are lacking pace on this particular Grand Prix as well. Uh, the Hasses, um, yeah, nothing, nothing you would expect the Hass to be in Q3 anyway. Given that Hulkenberg has been in Q3 a few times this simulation already, 
but it's more due to the driver than the car. Uh, as we see Magnuson quite a way off, Paul Kimmer as well. But yeah, let's see if there are any changes to the King or the results. And they are. In fact, there's only one. And it's Oscar Piastri. Dropping from, I think it was P7 per pole to P14, gets a lap time deleted. And it's out in Q2. Uh, quite a big shot for, from the Australian. Uh, qualified only P14. But this also means that Logan Sargent gets to Q3, uh, qualifying Alex Albon by 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 seconds basically. And <laughs> in a Q3, first time I qualified Alex Albon, I'm happy for Logan, for Logan Sargent. As uh, yeah, he's been getting destroyed this entire simulation so far, pretty much. Apart from one race where Sargent actually beat Albon and scored points. That was the other one now, but here we are with Sergeant legitimately ahead of Alvin. Oh, uh, yeah. Alonso tops the session, and out in Q2 are Alvin, Hamilton, Polkenberg, PS3, and Magnussen. Let's see Q3 at the end. Obviously, Max Verstappen topping Q3 provisionally with Carlos Sainz in P2, so Sainz ahead of Leclerc once again. We have Perez in P3, Alonso P4, Charles Leclerc P5, Lance Stroll P6, Russell P7, Norris P8, Sunoda P9, and Logan Sargent in P10. Yeah, uh, the Aston's Ferraris are seem, seems to be uh, seem to be the closest challengers to Red Bull, as McLaren's and Mercedes cars seem to struggle a bit on pace, seemingly uh, from qualifying. They're mostly closer to racing bulls uh, than. To the rest basically uh, with slowly starting the P10 yeah uh, uh, I don't think anyone would expect him to be any higher in this, uh, in this scenario uh, Carl Sainz had a short look like for the third time in uh, this this, this uh, Grand Prix and it's qualifying meaning Sainz is probably the fastest driver this weekend which is uh, very unusual as well uh, Perez relatively close to Max Verstappen only two positions behind only two tens behind uh, Stroll behind Alonso, as you would expect, but uh, this time it's relatively close. And uh, yeah, that's, that's for the driver pairings. Let's see if there are any changes to Q3. Uh, there are no changes, so this is how things stand. Max Verstappen lines up a pole position. But let's see the starting grid first before we head to the race itself. In starting grid, we have Max Verstappen lining up a pole position for the British Grand Prix. So we have Carl Sainz in P2. The rest of the grid follows in Perez in P3, Alonso in P4, Charles Leclerc in P5, Lance Stroll P6, George Russell P7, Lionel Norris P8, Yuki Tsunoda in P9, and Logan Sargent in P10. We have Albon P11, Hamilton P12, Hulkenberg P13, PS3 P14, Magnussen P15, Ricardo P16, the Alpines of Gasly and Ocon P17, P18, and then the Sauber's locking out know, the last row with Bottas out of Joe in the two last spots for the British Grand Prix. This is the starting grid, so um, yeah, hopefully we're in for an exciting race because uh, this, I mean, Max pole position looks scary because uh, you don't expect Max to not win for pole position. And I, I would say it's pretty likely for Max to win uh, unless there are obviously any. Uh, Disturbances in the race or whatever. So let's see the race. As we have Charles Leclerc winning from Max Verstappen pole position. Oh, the irony. Yeah, uh, Leclerc winning from Max pole is not something you expect, especially uh, with with that. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> with that target grid. The last stroll P2 is probably the most interesting podium spot, even with Piastri P3 making up 11 spots. Yeah, this is a weird podium, and I'll explain it why later. Uh, then we do Red Bulls of Max ahead of Jekko in P4 and P5. Max with the fastest lap. P6 for Norris, uh, P7 for Sonoda, P8 for Alonso, P9 for Ricardo, and Logan Sargent scores even more points in the British group right now with P10. There's lap Hamilton P11, Bottas P12, Gallo P13, Magnuson P14, Ocon P15, Joe P16, Hulkar P17, and last of the finishing drivers, and DNS are Sainz, Alvin, and Russell. So, uh, let's round down the disturbance in the race, because uh, obviously there were uh, quite many. Uh, so, in terms of incidents, we have first Carlos Sainz DNFing 
from reliability issues, unfortunately, uh, from P2 in the grid, very unfortunate. Then we had George Russell crashing out, bringing out a virtual safety car. Then we had Alex Albon retiring to to uh, reliability, reliability issues as well, bringing out another safety car. So Science brought a safety car, Russell virtual, and Albon a uh, regular safety car. So two safety cars, technically three if you count the virtual one. So there were a lot of changes to, to the, the results basically, with a lot of shuffles in there. Uh, there's also additional driver from Nico Hulkenberg who brought damage to his car but still finished the race and caused no uh, no yellow flags or whatever. Just yeah, finished last with a bad, really bad race pace from the damaged car. Uh, so uh, the Haas wouldn't really finish anywhere any higher anyway, probably. Um, yeah, these are the race results. Charles Leclerc wins another Grand Prix in the simulation. Uh, making up four spots thanks to those uh, safety cars and things like that, as well as Lance Stroll making up four positions to P2. You would not expect Alonso to finish P8 while Stroll finishes P2, honestly. And Piastri, probably the even bigger shock at this point, uh, finishing P3 from P14 on the grid. Very good drive from Piastri, uh, even though he, he was greatly held by the safety cars. Uh, Max Verstappen, probably the driver most affected by by bad luck, basically in this in this case, only P4 with the fastest lap uh, down three places. Perez in P5, um, yeah, he was unlucky as well. But you, you wouldn't expect Perez to make up positions anyway uh, and finish ahead of Max. So P5 for Checo. Uh, Norris made up two spots to. Yeah, P6 and good points for McLaren. Uh, P7, the lead racing mold car is Yuki Tsunoda, making out two spots. Fernando Alonso dropping four to P8. Uh, unfortunate timing with the safety cars and things like that. But those things happen and you cannot be lucky all the time. Uh, as we have still Alonso very high up in the championship. Daniel Ricciardo making up 7 spots to P9, very good drive, even though it is probably due to the safety cars and things like that. Uh, and the last finishing driver in the top 10 is Logan Sargent scoring points, as I mentioned before. Uh, Lewis Hamilton only could manage a P11, unfortunately, maybe in one place, but yeah, it's a Mercedes car, really didn't suit this, this track, as well as the Alpines, seemingly. P12 for Bottas in the, in the Sauber car, uh, making up 7 spots, P13 for Gasly, making up 4 spots, but those, those, those made up spots are mostly due to the DNFs themselves. Magnussen P14, Ocron P15, Joe P16 and the last finishing driver in P17, Nico Hulkenberg. Uh, again the DNS are Sainz, Albon and Russell. So those were the race results for the British Grand Prix. Let's see how it affected. With the standings after round 12 in here, after the British Grand Prix, we have Max Verstappen leading the way on 200 points. Uh, two victories, seven podiums, four pole positions and seven fast slaps. Uh, quite a, a lot of fastest laps, having the most podiums and most pole positions, but not the most wins. That is uh, Lonzo stat with the most wins. 163 points in P2, 5 podiums, 3 pole positions, and a fastest lap. We have Charles Leclerc in P3 on 146 points, 2 victories, 3 podiums, and 3 fastest laps. Uh, so, yeah. For place, PS3, 134 points, 2 victories, 4 podiums, 2 poles, and a fastest lap. We have Lionel is climbing up to P5 now on 123 points, a victory, 3 podiums, 2 poles, and no fastest lap so far. We have George Russell dropping to P6 now. Uh, yeah, Mercedes are really struggling this part of the season. Uh, yeah, both drivers struggling for pace in that car, with Russell making a lot of mistakes. Uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, this is not going too well. P6 for George Russell so far, 115 points, a victory and 5 podiums. The car signs in P7, 93, 94 points, victory, 3 podiums and a pole position. And we have Lewis Hamilton only P8, 91 points and 1 podium so far. Ninth place is for Checo Perez, 82 points and 2 podiums. And we have Lastro finally making the top 10 in that Aston Martin. They came one spot and now on 59 points and two podiums. They have Yuki Tsunoda in P11, 
dropping one place from the top 10 of the World Draw Championship. But that was to be expected. Uh, 48 points for him. Uh, P12 is Pierre Gasly. Still on 20 points. Uh, P13 is Alvin on 19. And uh, podium, 14 points. Uh, sorry, 14th place. Ocon with 17 points. 15th place is Daniel Ricciardo with 12 points. Valtteri Bottas in P16, uh, 4 points. P17 for Lumin Sargent. On 3 points now. Uh, scoring points, but still only P17 in the Drive Championship. FP18, Nico Hulkenberg on 2 points. And uh, for some reason, there are good two Guanyu Joes, but this is supposed to be uh, Magnussen in P20, both scoring zero points so far. Uh, apologies for this inconvenience. Anyway, let's go to the Constructors Championship, and we see Red Bull still leading the way on 282 points, with uh, a bit smaller gap, I would say, uh, as, at least visually. Obviously, Red Bull scored more points than McLaren. Uh, by tiny bit, I think, but still, uh, not that big of a gap in the constructors. Two victories for Red Bull, nine podiums, four more positions, and seven fast laps. Uh, yeah, there's nine podiums, that's a lot. And two more than the next next team with the most podiums. Play McLaren, Aston, on seven. Uh, the next three teams that have pre victory, pre victories each, with McLaren P2, 257 points. Uh, 7 podiums, 4 pole positions, and the fastest lap. Ferrari in 240 points, 6 podiums, 1 pole, and the 3 fastest laps. And then Aston Martin making up a place out of Mercedes. Now into P4, 222 points, 7 podiums, 3 poles, and 1 fastest lap. And then the last team to win a race this season is Mercedes in P5 now on 206 points, 1 victory, and 6 podiums. Even though Mercedes has now P5, the gap to Red Bull is not that big. Uh, not that big at all. They could have some good upgrades uh, after this race and perhaps could jump back to P P2 even. I don't know if it's enough to fight P1, but I mean, we saw a lot of changes throughout the season already. So it may happen, obviously. Uh, first of the teams that haven't on a race so far are racing Bulls team on 60 points, uh, then the Alpine on P7 and 37 points, P8 for Williams on 22 points and the podium, 4, uh, four points for Sauber and P9 and 2 points for Haas and P10. So this is Constructor Championship. Next up is the Hungarian Grand Prix which should upload on Tuesday. So. Uh, Make sure to check that one out as we should have Ajax narrating the video with this voiceover. Hopefully, everything will work out this time uh, as we had Lebanana unfortunately not making it last time. Uh, but hopefully, there will be no interruptions this time. Uh, so, round 13 for Ajax. Uh, make sure to check that one out. Uh, tomorrow should be the recap of the first 12 races as we see the head to heads and Generally, uh, we look as the season progressed with some graphs and statistics, so make sure to check that one out as well tomorrow. So yeah, I'm getting Grand Prix next time. Uh, if you may enjoy this video, please consider subscribing, liking the video, and commenting uh, down below what you want to see uh, more from me in terms of F1 content. And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.